Every day in America, and much of the rest of the world, it's Trump. It's all Trump, all the time. Every problem, every issue, every news bite, every report is somehow related to the new God Emperor of the United States. In the wake of Trump, America seems to have forgotten how the U.S. got here. The country is blaming everything on the new devil. On January 27, 2017, Trump signed an executive order, putting a 90-day restriction on entry from people who are nationals from seven countries. The block on immigration stood until February 3rd, when a federal judge in Seattle ordered a national halt to enforcement of the travel ban. But what's interesting is that the executive order only mentions one specific country, Syria. The other countries come from references to the Terrorist Travel Prevention Act of 2015, which lists Iran, Iraq, and Sudan as countries of concern, removing them from the Visa Waiver Program. In February 2016, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen were added to this list as well. All of this happened under Obama. And where were all these protesters during the past eight years? We've had eight years of predator drones, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, which allows for indefinite military detention without trial or charge, the expansion of domestic spying, the bombing of Libya. Libya was a nation that was once stable, safe, and had the highest GDP per capita of any country in Africa. After NATO and U.S. intervention, Libya went from being a prosperous nation to a failed state. Obama also attempted to first go to war with Syria in 2013. He used the same weapons of mass destruction rhetoric Bush used against Iraq. The Syrian regime carried out a chemical weapons attack. We thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't. The American people didn't buy it, but that didn't matter because the United States created new terrorist groups. Uh, however, the U.S. government has been providing money, weapons, intel assistance, and other types of support through the CIA directly to these groups that are working with uh, and are affiliated with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And then went to war with Syria anyway. Assad has made it very clear that if Europe and the U.S. want to stop the refugee crisis... So it's not about Europe didn't accept them or embrace them as refugees. It's about not dealing with the cause. Stop, if, if you are worried about them, stop supporting terrorists. Obama put no one from the previous administration in jail for war crimes, and then committed several war crimes of his own. And yet those who would be considered the base of the Democratic Party, who opposed Bush endless war in Iraq and Afghanistan, were simply nowhere near as loud during the Obama years as they are now. I mean, we did have protests. As stated, there were protests against the wars in Libya and Syria. There were protests against predator drones. What about the hundreds of innocent people we are killing with our drone strikes in Pakistan yeah. and in Yemen and Somalia? And there were protests against the banks that caused the 2008 financial crisis. Still, none of these movements seems to compare with the level of anger and fear in the midst of another player who is simply following the same agenda as his predecessors. In 2009, Obama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Today, he is the first president in history to spend every day of his tenure at war. The Jonas Brothers are here. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. Just because someone on your team happens to be in the office... But uh, boys don't get any ideas. ...doesn't make the atrocities stop. I have two words for you. It simply makes those atrocities... Predator drones. ...more palatable. You will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? 